Ha 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 ha. We, we're working. Hi, we purposely sat in front of our books so we would look smarter. Yeah. Um, this is another health update. Ben's sitting here for moral support and he will chime in as necessary like last time. Hi. Ah, okay. So obviously the So Here's the Deal videos stopped. Um, after I rewatched them, <laughs> it was painfully obvious how much more I needed to take care of my mental health than I was at that point in time. So I think the last, oh, here I go fucking with my hair again. The la when, when did we do the first health update? You're still in old house. It was a while ago, a couple months ago. I think it was like January or February when you guys just saw me crying about my health. And so at that point in time, I was still really sick and I hadn't been doing much to get better. Um, so you guys keep asking how I'm doing and I don't want to plaster my health problems all over Instagram because I, I, it's just not how I am. And I don't want every single post to be about how I'm sick. So clearly my Instagram has made a big shift recently. I can't eat food right now still, I can't work out. So I've been really focusing on my hobbies that make me happy to help me with my mental health and that's why my Instagram has been filled with travel, gardening, and longboarding and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at with my health. Um, my stomach hasn't gotten any, I'm not gonna try so hard not to cry. Um, so as I was trying to update you guys in the So Here's the Deal videos and essentially that turned into me crying in the camera because I, I wasn't, I, at that point in time when I was doing those, I wasn't doing everything I could to take care of myself mentally and physically with the illnesses that I do have. Um, so essentially, when did I do the stomach emptying test? I think it was very early February or late January. Early February? Yeah, because I think when, I, this, when the first health video came out, I hadn't taken my final stomach study test yet. So I took that and it was concluded that my stomach's fully paralyzed, meaning the muscles and it didn't do anything. It didn't contract at all or um, empty or anything like that. So, and if you guys don't know, I have gastroparesis. Um, and so, it hasn't gotten any better. I've just been navigating it better and I've been taking care of myself better. Um, I can't eat solid food and for a while there I was pushing it because it's sometimes it's just easier to eat what is in the fridge or what is right in front of me opposed to like making the effort of making a liquid meal. Um, and so yeah, I, I for the first part of the year I was just still really sick all the time. I didn't do any research to get myself better and then essentially this one kind of fucked me up with some truth and essentially told me how much better I am than not taking care of myself and um, so I'm just losing my train of thought here. I know it's, it's hard to talk about. It's, I just feel like I'm sitting here complaining and that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, so I was just getting sicker and sicker. and. Um, throwing up several times a day because my stomach won't do anything and anything that went in wouldn't go anywhere. Um, and I just wasn't dietary, diet what, dietarily? <laughs> dietarily? We're gonna go ahead and say dietarily is a word. <laughs> dietarily, I wasn't doing everything I could be doing. So, essentially I sat down and I did a shitload of research on everything that could potentially help me. And I learned so much about my illness and my disease, and I learned stupid little things like pineapple, bromelain, is that what it's called? Bromelain? I always want to say bromine, but I think that's an element. <laughs> I should know these things, but um, <coughs> that enzyme in pineapple is wonderful for stomach emptying. And I started doing a bunch of research on fermented foods like kefir and sauerkraut and kimchi and what it could do for my gut health. And I also realized I was eating nowhere enough bone broth. I learned that celery juice can help with stomach emptying. And so I sat down and I used every resource and every brain cell I had to get some help for myself because there's no, my doctor's been zero help, zero at all and there's no gastroparesis expert in Reno so um, with where I'm currently at I'm choosing to still try to get healthy through diet modification. The other thing I'm currently doing right now that's actually helping is I'm having my intestines and my stomach cupped. Um, some people might hear this and say it's juju. It increases blood flow and all of the medication for stuff like gastroparesis 
blood flow medication. Um, so anytime I have my guts worked on with cupping or massage, I can like feel them working and hear my stomach working. Um, so that's something else that's been really promising for me. Um, and then the mental health. Um, so even though my physical health, I, I would say it, it hasn't necessarily gotten better. I'm just navigating it better and handling it better. Does that make sense? Which in turn has kind of made it a little bit better. Um, so I'm not as nauseous all day because I'm not putting things in my body that can make me nauseous. And just tiny little things like that just to improve my quality of life. But the mental side of things is where it got really ugly. Um, when you can only eat 500 to 1,000 calories a day and you're trying to operate several businesses, um, it's really hard, as you can imagine, on your brain and your body, and it just really takes a toll on you. Um, I get pissy on like <laughs> 2,000 calories a day. I couldn't imagine what she's been doing. <sighs> so I'm still mostly liquids. Um, what solid foods seem to be okay? Anything mushy. Is that, like if you could put it in a glass of water and it would just dissolve, it, my stomach can, like it doesn't have to break anything down. So like, like we, ta we talked about it in the last video, what I can and cannot have. But honestly, I just changed my mindset toward it. And instead of being mad at my stomach or my guts and mad at other people that are healthy like I was, um, I just, you know, kind of, I'm not gonna say like accepted it or settled or came to terms. Like I've just kind of told myself this is just life right now and that's okay. And I've, I've heard more stories about gastroparesis going into remission than I have about it not. So I'm just trying to stay really hopeful. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to update you guys on where I'm at with my health because I'm not talking about it. <laughs> um, and clearly I'm, you know, clearly my life isn't very fitnessy right now. So um, I don't want to, I made the mistake last year of going on too long, acting like everything was fine when it wasn't. Um, things are a lot better right now than they have been in a long time as far as like my mindset with all of it goes. So um I did a mental health podcast yesterday where I kind of talked what I went through mentally with all of this. And um, sorry to tell you guys to come to YouTube and then you get to YouTube and I'm like, go to iTunes. Um, the mental health podcast was essentially just Chloe and I talking about what we've gone through um, this year with our mental health. And we just talk about it, put it out there. Uh, I'm just someone that likes to talk about it. It helps me and I know it helps other people. So I did the mental health thing by far was has been a bigger struggle the last couple months. It's just been coming to terms with the fact that I have a life-altering illness. And um, that's really all there is to it. And if you are going through health issues, like physical health issues, please, please, please take care of yourself mentally because it's scary um, being and feeling like you're trapped in a foreign body. And it's, I know, like, I know how scary it is. And it's so easy to just let this go up here when all of this is going to. So um, a lot of you guys did tell me about your autoimmune illnesses or that you're going through something right now and you still don't have a diagnosis. So this video is to let you guys know you're not alone and to please take care of yourselves mentally to the best of your ability. I mean, not even if you're fucking not sick either, you know. Um, but yeah, I just owed you guys an update on where I'm at because a lot of you are asking and say to see, you guys are saying that I seem to be doing better, which mentally I'm doing, I'm doing worlds better. So I just wanted to give you guys an update now that I have my camera fixed and figured out. Do you have anything to add? Um, I, I mean, I, I just really think that this whole, this whole process has been a huge uh, learning curve for us, like I said in the last video, because gastroparesis is not very well known. It's not, there's not a whole lot of specialists in the medical community, it seems. Um, so it's one of those things where I feel like they haven't really nailed a treatment for it yet. Or you know, medication there, or anything? There is medication, like there's one, I think, FDA approved medication that they, they prescribe to people with gastroparesis. It works for some people, it works for others, doesn't work for some people, and then some people it just gives them permanent facial tics. So it's like, it's a clearly <laughs> it's, it's not all the way there yet. So I mean, really, I just feel like this is kind of, <coughs> you know, like I had to tell Chrissy that one day, like you kind of just stopped looking for alternate methods of treatment because- I gave up. I mean, that's, that's really, it's easy because with, with something like this where 
there is no like go do this and you'll be good you know you kind of have to go figure it out on your own just because the the information is so scarce on it medically speaking um, there's not a lot of direction you know so it's really like this whole thing for both of us has just been a process of constantly trying to continue educating ourselves on the matter and figuring out new methods of treatment and new things that'll work because it really is trial and error it's a whole bunch of trial and error it's and a, lot it, of, a lot of dietary adjustments you know obviously stress and mental health plays a whole lot into this as well which for a while there i think the whole physical health mental health was just creating this catastrophic cycle that was just right around the time where i told chrissy that she needed to start taking care of herself a little better. You Someone know. had to say it. And she I told think. me the same thing. We kind of both had just like turned, <laughs> well, into, you fell turned into trash can people. So when your significant other is very ill, like it carries over. Like I can't eat anything. I don't, you know, and it's like, it's hard on you to watch and it's affected both of us. It's affected Chloe. It's affected my employees. Like yeah. it's, it's been really fucking hard because it is physical and mental. And I, like I talked about on the podcast yesterday, like Chloe was saying that as my physical health deteriorated, she watched my physical health deteriorate over a year. And it's like my physical health deteriorated the same amount in like three months. It just felt like once we started getting answers and realizing what we were dealing with, I, yeah. and you know, it's when you're nauseous all day, it's easy to be fucking pissed. But like the other thing is... I'm not fucking proud of how I acted there for a while. It seemed like February, March, I was just like really angry and I was like, it was the Arnold. I went to the Arnold sick as fuck and I got to see so many people like so healthy and look so good and like I saw pictures of myself and <laughs> I went and got a bunch of shit injected in my face because I was so unhappy with, you know, like, but again, like had I been dealing with all of that, like the mental side of like losing like, look, and I know that that's so petty and not important, but like, I want to I mean, look, I want to look healthy. It, I, it, it would affect anybody's, you know, self-image if, if you if you lose a drastic amount of weight like you did. You know, I mean, it's not it's not it's not petty. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people, I mean, it, it affects it affects you in different ways. Yeah, and I I think that uh, I it was the Arnold that. I saw so many people healthy and eating and like, you know, and I got thrown into a very fitness minded stuff like event when I hadn't been doing any type of fitness, anything for months and it ripped me apart, man. And like, I remember trying to check my clients in that Monday and I, I like physically couldn't do it. Like I couldn't talk to anybody else about food or nutrition or, or body stuff. Cause I was, you know, I was a mess and like following the Arnold, the whole, pretty much the whole month of March was just fucked for me emotionally mentally physically everything and um but it's what i needed it's the you know the kick in the ass and like i don't yeah i feel like i'm just rambling at this point I yeah know. but i mean there's there's some good to the ramble because i feel like i don't know i've told people and i think i told people many times over the course of us being at the arnold that like just watching what you've been going through over the last year putting myself or anybody else in your shoes like I just at least speaking for myself I don't think that I would have taken it as well um, you know like these are two permanent life altering you know conditions that just don't go away you just again there's no like there's no pill for celiac disease there's no one cure for gastroparesis these are both, th both things that you have to adjust your lifestyle and manage in order to, to live, you know, a normal life. The other thing that's so, so weird is that I, like, I have ill, like, as far as these two illnesses, for you guys that don't know, I have liver disease too, but that's a whole other fucking set of problems. But I have two severe illnesses that are only, that are only caused by food. Like, if I just don't eat food, anything, if I don't put anything in my body, I feel fine. Like, that's what's so crazy. If I can make it a day drinking no water and eating nothing and my guts aren't destroyed, it's crazy how I feel fine. But as you can imagine, I'm exhausted and I can't just go throughout life not drinking water or eating food, you know? So, like... It's very bad. It's, it's hard. But I needed to let you guys know where I'm at. On the plus side, I'm back up to, like, 135, 136. I've been anywhere from, like, 132 to 135.6 for, like, a week now. So I am finally gaining weight, and I think it's because I'm better managing my anxiety because um, I know when my anxiety is really bad, I just turn into a beanpole. Um, 
So like I've gained some weight, I'm still not training, I'm not doing that powerlifting meet as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, I just needed to kind of let you guys know where I'm at because I don't want my entire Instagram to be like, I have gastroparesis, I have celiac disease, here's how I am today, you, you know, it's just not me. And I want to show people who are also sick that you cannot be your fucking illness. You cannot be a person with gas, like you, you know, you have to still be you and it just so happens that you have been dealt a shitty hand in the health department. So don't be your illness, don't succumb to your illness, fight it mentally and physically while being good to yourself. Um, okay, thanks for watching. And now that I have a fancy new microphone and my camera is not stuck in weird settings that I don't understand, this so here's the deal videos will be coming back starting next week and they'll be a little less <laughs> insane. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye.